team. I am a senior solution architect here. I've been here two and a half years now. Uh, that means I get to take a look at other people's code, do code reviews. I get to do framework assessments. I get to do a lot of training and walking through best practices and framework um, you know, crafting and intro to Selenium, advanced Selenium, CI, CD, parallelization, mobile, all sorts of fun things. Uh, before I joined Sauce Labs, I was a, a software development engineer and test at five different companies. So part of this talk is I have done a lot of these things in the past, and I know why you shouldn't do them, because I ran into problems using them in certain ways. And so a lot of this stuff is based on my personal experience. Um, all right. First thing I want to talk about is imperative versus declarative. Who here has heard of these terms before? A few. All right, great. Here's an example of something imperative. I'm using, this is still with a page object model type of a thing. This is Ruby, so hopefully it's somewhat easy to read. But the idea is you are specifying all the things you're doing. You're referencing a driver with the methods on the driver. You've got a page object, but then we're, we're calling to get an element back, and then we're taking an actual click on the, that element. We're doing a specific weight, sending exact uh, data values, passing those in, things like that. Here's the same thing in a declarative manner. Visit the sign-in page, sign in with a valid user, expect to be signed in. I'm not getting on an anti How many people do BDD here? Cucumber, JBHave, any of those fun things? All right, I'm not getting on a rant against that today. But the idea that why do you need necessarily natural language conversion if you keep your tests looking like this. Your manager shouldn't need English. If he wants to actually look at it, which most people who write BDD, no one actually looks at it. <laughs> this, this should be good enough, and this is how we should be thinking about doing it in the first place. So there are a number of things that encourage imperative design, which I speak against lightly. Um, Keyword-driven testing is kind of the robot thing where you're trying to, how many people are familiar with robot framework? couple, yeah, a lot of Python people tend to do, uh, do robot stuff. I don't enjoy it as much because it tends to encourage imperative. Uh, and I, actually, let me step back and talk about imperative versus declarative. Imperative is the walking through the specific details of what exactly you're doing. I am taking this action, I'm doing this next thing, and you're giving kind of a recipe of exactly what to do. Declarative is like, let's focus on the business logic the important thing, and let's abstract all of the details, all of the things that you, we need to have a specific, a particular object to, that has particular methods to do particular things that are independent of what our business reasoning is. And let's put that somewhere else. We're trying to keep it big picture. There are a number of things in the industry that kind of force us to stay detail-oriented detail and prevent us from abstracting things. Uh, Data-driven testing is another one. Again, something that a lot of BDD uh, people will misuse. I don't know if you've seen like the scenario outlines where you've got like this huge table of data and you can't parse any of it. Good thing it's in natural language, right? <laughs> Nightwatch.js, Site Prism, Selenite, these are kind of some frameworks that kind of encourage, have custom matchers that, that end up calling specific methods on the driver instead of abstracting that, that logic away. Um, I've also seen someone make a page object alternative that was, uh, everything was in property files in Java. And it was kind of an interesting, took a look at it, it was kind of some interesting stuff there. But again, in order to really leverage that, you had to put all of that logic in the test itself. Mm -hmm.